Hi guys and uh, welcome back to my channel. Today we have the Maytech F405 all-in-one flight controller. This is a bit different than the one that had the PDB and the ribbon and the FC separately. This is an all-in-one solution they have just released today. So hopefully I'm going to have this edited and uploaded by today. So we're going to be testing this guy for noise and we're going to set him on the noisiest setup I have in the house and to really push him in to see how good he he copes and how he compares to basically the F4 and that video will come later on how we'll put him the DYS F4 HGLRC F4 flame and this guy against each other um, so that'll be very interesting and then we could really take a look at how each of them actually stacks up against each other now let's quickly take a look at what it comes with they give you this plate here so maybe you could put it on top of your uh, flight controller and mount your VTX if your VTX is not mountable. This is not uh, conductive, this is not carbon fiber, it's a PCB so you don't have to worry about that. This, that's pretty awesome, I, I really like this so that's very good. Um, they do provide you with the uh, rubber damp dampeners for your flight controller as you can see. These are kind of like those really AC things and it's kind of in the middle. It's uh, This part is not connected to this part and it's just rubber so uh, when you would mount this, you would actually have to put it in like this, so that's good. I think I think you could actually even do it the other way around, but um, I like to I prefer doing it this way. Okay, so you get four of those. That's good. And check this out, guys. They even give you a 35 volt, 470 microfarad low ESR capacitor. This is this is very good. This actually just proves to me that Maytek knows there's a problem with these all-in-one flight controllers, and that they give you something to compensate that problem. You don't have to go look around for it. So your solution would be here. Like this, you would just stick it on your battery terminals um, and, and, it, and it would clean everything out if you had a problem. It should clean everything out. So that is very good. Um, this uh, That says a lot. Maytek really knows what they're doing here. I, I really believe that just this gesture, just to give you this, that they admit that there's a problem and then they recognize the problem and they even give you a solution for it if you do run into that problem, which is a big plus for me. Um, so I, I really like this and I am, I'm a very big fan of this really. However, there's one thing, it doesn't come with an XT60 connector. So <laughs> I guess they were just right there like XT60 or low ESR. Hmm, let's give them a low ESR. But that's better than an XC60 connector. You could buy a bunch of uh, XC60 connectors. All right, so enough about what it comes with. Let's talk about the board here. So uh, this is the Matic F405 flight controller. It's running an F4 uh, microcontroller unit. So it's an F4 processor, which is very fast, which is very good. And um, it takes an input of 9 to 27 volts, which is a 3 to a 6S LiPo. And it does have some protection, which is very good. Now it's rated for each pad is rated for 30 ma 30 amps, and a maximum burst of 50 amps. So that's that's very good. So it's stating that it's six layers of two ounce copper on the PCB. So that, that's that's good. That's that, that's very good. I think that's more than enough, really. So and they do provide you with two regulators. You get a nine volt regulator and you get a 5 volt regulator. They're both rated for 2 amps. I don't know if it's 2 amps max. So we could safely say it's 2 two amps but 1.5 amp, which is more than enough. Uh, the current sensor is a 200 amp current sensor, which is very good. So they do provide you with a current sensor here. And let's see. You We also have two LEDs here for status. I, do, I don't know what they... There's a blue one and a red one, so I don't know what they're going to be used for here. And for UART ports, they do provide us with five UART ports. And on UART 2 is where you would connect your SBUS since it has the built-in inverter. So if you were to use SBUS, you would use UART 2. And I think it should be right there. There's SBUS. So that would be UART 2. So here on here, SBUS is UART 2. All right. So as I said, it's an F4 flight controller. And it can run a 32K gyro update frequency and a 16K PID loop frequency, which is very good. And it's rocking the Betaflight OSD. The It's running the AT7456E chip, which is a very good one, I believe. I mean, if, if this is done correctly in here, this should be very well. So I have high hopes for this, but I really don't know what to expect because, you know, there isn't so many capacitors. But I, I have a feeling like it's going to be a good one for some reason. A decent one at least. So um, let's quickly go over the pads and then we'll jump into the testing. I'll try to do this as fast as possible. 
So overall, just, just looking at it from the beginning, we do get a, a pretty big sized pads, which is very good. So that'll be very easy to solder. All right, let's just begin here. So you get your signal, you get your ground for your for your ESC and your power for ESC. So that's good, that's signal one. Let's check the orientation because I haven't really checked it. So it would be one, so one, two, three, four. Perfect, that's perfect beta flight. They have the USB sticking out the left and you have your battery sticking out the right. So that's perfect, uh, I like that. Um, all right, so let's we finish this pad. Oh, we do get an RSSI. That's awesome. That's very good. So you could measure your um, receiver and transmitter signal strength uh, if you had that option on your receiver. If you're using that kind of transmitter. Okay, so here we get the negative for the buzzer. So we can add a buzzer. And here is a five volt. And here is a four point five volt. Uh, I, I think it's a four point five volt. Nothing's really stating on that. And then I believe this is another ground. So we get two grounds here. So, okay, that's good. And then here we have the RX4 and the S bus. So this is UR2, which would be RX2 in, in theory, really. But this has the built-in inverter, so you could actually just run it without any modification to your um, receiver if you're running the FR Sky protocol S bus. Here we have TX4 and RX2. And here we have RX5 and a 3.3 volt. So 3.3 volt is basically if you're going to use like a spectrum based satellite uh, receiver or um, any any receiver that would take 3.3 volts, you would just hit it here and here's the ground. And here we got TX5 and then we got here, what do we have here? This is signal 3, there's a signal, power, ground, good. And this is signal 5, so maybe you could use this for other things. Uh, let's just say you damaged the signal 3, so you would route it in beta flight. Uh, the CLI in the command line interface and then uh, you could just route signal 5 to be signal 3 if you by chance just burnt that pin on the flight controller. Here we have our boot pin and our USB and here's our another signal we get an S6 here signal 6 so that's very good we got two extra signals uh, I think we could use them for basically almost just about anything if you really just look up on the beta flight um, documentation so these can be used for something else if you wanted uh, don't know what but you, there's a lot of possibilities you could do with these um, Here we have our 5 volt ground cam so cam would be the yellow line coming in from your camera And then here we have VTX this would be the yellow line going to your VTX So it would go to camera and then it'll jump into the OSD And then it'll pop out of the VTX here's ground 9 volt for your VTX And uh, if you have a 5 volt VTX and a camera I mean, if you, uh, what I would recommend, uh, some VTXs now come 5 volt. I would not connect the 5 volt and the camera to the 5 volt. I would actually connect the camera to the 9 volt and then the, the VTX to the 5 volt. That would be a lot better. So that's good. So here, I think this is a 3.3 regulator for your uh, the Spectrum satellite. And then we have our current resistor. And that's really it on this side. Let's take a look on the other side now. So it does give us, that's very good. It gives us a SD card expansion here. So that's awesome. And we get our LED, the, this is, this would, we get our LED pad down here. Uh, this would be the signal for your LED. And this is the five volt and this is the ground. So this would be the one that's controlling your LEDs. So that's good. Okay, this is for kind of like debugging here, SDA and CSCL. Uh, we don't need those. And, oh, that's cool. So you can even route your signals here. So that's awesome. And you also get another five volt pad here. And these would be the same thing on this side. So don't mix those up. That'd be very bad, and they're using buck converters, which is very good. So these are these these should perform. I have high hopes for these guys, and that is it. So let's stick it on the bench and let's get testing. All right, guys. So the it was uh, it was just unbelievable, really. Um, so let me tell you what I did. I actually ran this test eighteen times. 
um, I pushed it as hard as I could where to, to the point where I burned three ESCs and I have even uh, hit the fail safe on my test bench which is 50 volts about anything above 50 volts it'll actually just shut it down by itself so there was three tests where I actually hit the fail safe and um, and burned three ESCs and it just held so good that I could not really believe it. Uh, the reason why I pushed it 18 times and to do such thing because I kept feeling like I was doing something wrong. But when I just started seeing the ESCs burning and I started seeing the, the test bench actually hitting the fail safe, I knew this was just a spectacular. This was amazing. And don't forget, they even provide you with low ESR capacity. I didn't even get a chance to use it. I didn't even need to use it. So this is very good. I'm very impressed. I really like this board. Uh, good thing I have two. Um, the second one will be will definitely go on a build, and I'm gonna put it on a very power hungry build, such as what an Emacs 2306 2400 kV motor. Um, just because I think I could trust this one uh, with such a such a motor. However, you know it's always good to put low ESR capacitors, but I, I like just in in perspective of noise and and voltage spikes, voltage drops on the regulators around here. Um, it was just absolutely clean and don't forget I was zoomed in this time to uh, two volts per division That means every square is two volts up and down So you didn't even see it hit a drop a quarter of a volt, you know from the regulators or, or pop up So it was just spectacular. I'm I'm very impressed. I'm, I'm I, I just, That's all I can really say right now. I'm just very impressed that the testing was good. It was actually very good and um, There's nothing much more I could say except one thing that I really did not like and that's just me being picky. I think They don't provide you the XC60 connector, but that's it. That's the only thing that just uh, Just really annoyed me. I had to go look for one, but other than that it was it. I mean, I don't mind it I, I'll get my own XC60 connector if I get such a good board for, for a very good price. What is it like $40? Um, it's it's five dollars more expensive I think than the the F4 flame. But when the F4 flame came, I was like forty five fifty or even sixty. I don't even remember. So the, the, this just is, this absolutely destroys it. From the testing here, absolutely just annihilates everything. Even though I burnt the ESC and burnt everything, this is still running perfect. So uh, that also says something. Now, as of the testing goes, it it passed. It's one of the best things I've ever reviewed on on this channel and I've ever gotten so far. And I, to be honest, I didn't expect I would get something so good so early. Um, and this was just, um, I don't think, I mean, I think this is like one of the perfect results you can get in this testing. Um, however, this is all I could say. I can't tell you more now until I actually build it. And I will be building it tonight, guaranteed tonight. I'm going to start building uh, the quad with this guy uh, just so we can test him. I'm going to try to have him flown by tomorrow so we could test this guy. Um, and that's really it, guys. So um, I really hope I helped someone out there. And um, if you guys have any suggestions or any comments, just feel free to let me know. And if I really did help you, if, if it would be amazing if you could use my affiliates link. It goes a long way uh, just to, to support the channel. Um, it really helps out. I could bring in more more products and, and stuff for review so we can actually see the hidden uh, data that no one really gets to see. And, and that's what I'm really after, you know, just to, to help everyone. And actually myself, I'm very curious what is good and what is bad. And um, just to help out the community. So that's going to conclude it for this video, guys. If you guys have any questions or any suggestions, feel free to let me know. And don't forget to drop a like on the Facebook page. I'm always there. Hit me up. You can talk to me if you want. <laughs> And that's it, guys. So uh, that's going to conclude it for this video. And I will see you next time. See you, guys.